Today, our champion Dick O'Connell of Abington, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Dennis Shute of Amesbury, Massachusetts, on Camel Pin Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candlepin Bowling, and welcome here to the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, for today's match. It'll be three strings of Candlepin Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. The tangible souvenirs come from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston, the larger of the two trophies obviously going to the winner. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 of that goes to the winner. $350 goes to uh, the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously if they tie, well, they would split that at $25 apiece. There are other opportunities for our bowlers to enrich themselves. I'll tell you about that as the program continues. I have in my hand here two certificates. One of them is a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. That goes to our marksman of the day, the bowler with the most marked. And the other yellow one here is from the Super 7 Tire Dealers. It's a $50 gift certificate, and that will go to the runner-up today. All right, let's meet today's bowlers, shall we? And first of all, let's welcome Dennis Shute here because I understand that you just decided a week or so ago to try out for this show. Is that right? Yeah, not quite. <laughs> About 16 years ago, I was started. Is that right? Six, 16 years you've been trying to get on this show, huh? Yep. And finally made it. I bet you came uh, fairly close a couple of times. A few you? times. One pin, two pins. Son of a gun. It's not easy. No, I know. And I keep telling people out there that we don't invite the bowlers on. They have to win their way on. And uh, it's amazing how many of the guys like, like uh, O'Connell here, just uh, they decide they're making it a yearly habit yeah. now, you know. <laughs> You're rolling along, you son of a gun, going for six in a row. Huh? Well, I got pretty lucky last week. I snuck by that one, so. Yes, I, well, we all have to admit that, that it didn't, uh, it wasn't one of your smashing victories. I mean, it was, a, it was a, what is the expression? A win is a win is a win, right? Looks the same on paper, I suppose. Absolutely, right. Like they say, all, uh, all the base hits look like line drives in the box score, no matter whether they were dribblers or anything else. Okay, good luck to you, Dick, and good luck to you, Dennis, and we'll get underway right after this. All right, getting us underway, Dennis Shute making his first appearance. And he has three pins to work on. One, three, six. Dennis is single, works as a draftsman. League average, 125. Going for a spare. Not quite. And he gets a 10. All right, Dennis. Down. Dennis shoots high single is 186, high triple 448. There's a test for him, the diamond. Nice shot by Dennis, and we all know that that is a tough spare lead. Here's our defending champion, Dick O'Connell. Most of you know that his league average is 126, and he's trying to make it six in a row. Wood out front. And the pin standing are the six, seven, ten. Only the six. Now he has a choice of seven or ten. So it's an eight box to begin for our defending champion. Leaves the four horsemen left side. Got two and four, but one and seven still there.
10 bucks. Dennis had a 624 in winning his roll off. Gonna be tough to do something here, because that was a fill on his spare and he got just four. He's got four pins over on the right. Three, five, six, and ten over on the left, four, seven. And yes, he made it. Came back and made it. His high single is 186 and his high triple 448. Two full on the head pin. He's left with five pins standing. On the left, it's the 247. On the right, the 36. Not this time. Three marks in a row. Any combination of strikes or spares in the same string is worth $50 in bonus money. Then each subsequent consecutive mark on that same string is worth $50 a piece as long as he can keep it going. A nine. Right here, man. Right here. Dick O'Connell's high single is 197. His high triple 468. And he rolled that on this show last June, 468. Four, seven, and ten. Everything went except the seven. It's a nine. All right, you can settle down. Throw the hammer. Everything down except the 10. A spare, and we take our first check on the scoreboard after four boxes of the first string, as we do in the second. So the score right now in the pins that are already down is challenger Dennis Shute 48 and Dick O'Connell 37. Challenger Dennis Shute. A strike. Ah, that's his third mark. Both of them were hammers. They went right down. Bango. And it'll be interesting when Dennis Shute comes up again. All right, here's Dick O'Connell working on a spare. And there's a... He has strike on his spare. The six pin fell left instead of into the 10 to the right. Now that 10 pin for a spare. Yes, he has it. Okay, stand by. Dennis Shute has two strikes in a row. No, 
West. Uh, I didn't want to say a word to jinx it. I guess just about everybody knows, but in case you don't, three strikes in a row in the same string. An extra bonus of $1,000. Now for a spare. Oh, he held it just a fraction too long. So it's a nine fill. And this single pin would go for a 10. He has it. Dennis has a fine string working, 104 through seven. on the left and then across the back to seven, eight, ten. He had the five in there too. Ten. One fourteen through eight. Now Dick O'Connell who has fifty dollars in bonus money for three marks in a row. Trying to keep this streak going because once you've established it with the three in a row then each becomes worth 50 after that six is the fill and on the left he has four seven with nobody around and on the right he has six and ten with a pair of pieces of wood around that six Seven. One piece of wood kind of angled behind the two and in front of the seven. Yes, he has it. Spare in the eight. Now our challenger, Dennis Shute, comes up. Dennis representing Baldinelli's bowl away and the Lafayette lanes. Is he going to get another strike? Nope, the piece of wood in the back kept the six pin from going down. It, it has wood in front and in back, supporting it. Spare in the ninth. I told you his league average is 125. He's already at 124 plus. Oh. Ralph Stewart calls time. There's a piece of wood that's going to have to be picked up. It's gone into the gutter on the left-hand side and it has to be cleared. Nope, that went over the cliff. So the best he can do is a 143. And when I said it in that way, the best he can do, I certainly was not denigrating what he's done. That's an excellent performance for a 125 average bowler coming on for the first time and rolling a 143. Okay, here's Dick O'Connell working on a spare. Big nine drop. And for a spare, he will have to pick up the four. He had it all the way. All right, two in a row. He's now at 120.
125. 125. Yes! Oh, yes! How about that one? That's worth another look, isn't it? Beautiful hit. Another $50 in bonus money. Up now to 100. At 135. So they tie. And for the first time in a long time, we split $25 a piece as they tied for that first string at 143. And to make it official, I'll say we'll be right back after this. Middle string, that means our defending champion leads it off, and he is and has been for several weeks now, Dick O'Connell. Good start, everything down except the four pin. Some wood rolling this way. It's come way up beyond the deadwood line. Ralph Stewart takes it away. Now there is one piece of wood right where number one would be. And he's got the four pin to pick up for a spare. All the way, right on it. too full on that head pin and that's the difference between a strike or a big uh, eight or nine drop just uh, maybe a couple of inches difference between hitting it full or hitting it in the pocket he's got to get now he still has five pins standing so he wants to get the four on the left if he can he did so the net gain was two, since the fill was only was three and he had a nine in the next box. So he got 22 pins out of those two boxes. Now, our challenger, Dennis Shoot from Amesbury. And Dennis has a legitimate spare leave with the one and two. So he begins the second string with a spare. As you know, you who are watching the first string, they are tied coming into this, each having rolled a 143. That breaks the tie right there as he got a seven drop. He's opposite a nine box. So it's a nine and a difference of four pins. The difference in the fills between a seven and a three. Al Giglio keeping score on that big scoreboard today and Keith Williams keeping score beside me. Dick O'Connell has one pin to get. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee. Oh, those socks and the shoes, they're gorgeous. One pin with wood around it. He has it. Spare in the third. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator, and Phil Rubin is our producer and director. Our crew today is Dick Erickson, Joe Sukar, Skip Peabody, and Roger Rice. Come on. Come on. Over there, Dick. A 
Okay, eight was the fill, and the spare leave is the six and ten with wood between the six and the ten. Yes, sir. He has it. So three marks out of the four boxes that he has rolled in the second string for Dick O'Connell. His challenger, Dennis Shute, had one mark. Let's see now if he can match these two. Four horsemen all alone, left side. Punched out the two. It's a nine. Whatever the difference is in this string, that's the difference in the match since they were tied coming into this second. Dennis has three pins over on the left, four, seven, and eight. And on the right, the 10, and a piece of wood that hasn't decided where it's going to go yet. Settling down on an angle toward those three, about where between the one and the five would be. An eight box. And in the second, it is Dick O'Connell, 50, with a bonus ball yet to roll to Dennis Schutz, 43. Five after six. Now here is his challenger, Dennis Shute. He'll have to reset. Dennis fired that out there, and Ralph Stewart, sitting right on the lob line, noted that it did not make contact with the lane till it had passed the Deadwood line. Second ball. So he recovers and gets a spare. Since that was his second ball, it is a spare. Bonus ball. Thin hit. Just four. Four horsemen right side. Four and seven on the left. No wood. Good try. And as you take out the one, three, and six. Oh, pretty shot. Oh, yes. That was a pretty, pretty shot. It was for a 10. There would have been a bigger reaction had it been a spare, but it's still just as, uh, just as fine a shot. Boy, when you can kick over the, take the four seven and kick that four over to get the 10. No wood. Dick O'Connell on the line, and he has a half Worcester left. Punching out. Two and eight. So close as that pin toppled from the, the four pin toppled, not into the five, but in front of it. A 10. Eight pins separating our bowlers right now, and we're a little past halfway. Six and ten over on the right. On the left, it's the two pin with a piece of very favorable wood on its right side. It didn't go. Not the way he wanted it.
and eight. Challenger, Dennis Shoot. Two, four, five, and seven, no wood. Five still there. It's still eight pins in favor of Dick O'Connell. Is it going to be the six pin rocking but not going down? Ooh, missed it. Big miss, big miss. There it is for a 10. Six pins difference right now. That looked as if it was going to be a bigger hit than it turned out to be. So what it, the result is that he has the diamond left plus the seven. Or if you want to, it's the two, four, five, seven, eight. Yes, made it. That puts him at 103. His average is 126. He rolled an opening 143, as did his challenger, Dennis Shute. Seven is the fill. 110. Two, five, and seven. Did not go. Only the two. A nine. One nineteen. Dennis is left with a difficult shot. It's the four horsemen right side plus the eight pin. Punched out the three. And goes through the same spot and winds up with a six. That's quite a swing. From a six pin lead, it jumps up now to a 17. Oh, baby, look at this. Right across the back, the eight, nine, 10. And one piece of wood perpendicular, the other parallel over against the 10. That's an 18 pin lead now for Dick O'Connell who picks up another $50 for winning the middle string. And as we tilt up, we'll give you the score. So we said it's an 18 pin difference. There it is, O'Connell 262 and shoot 244. String and leading it off here is our challenger, Dennis Shoot of Amesbury. It's 
spare leave. Just as soon as Dennis fires here. He got it. Before I forget it, the uh, World Candle and Bowling Congress Awards Banquet is tonight at Lantana's in Randolph. And we want to congratulate the WCBC Lady Pro Bowler of the Year, Janet Pock. A six fill and a perennial champion, it seems like, Peter Flynn, who was the men's pro bowler of the year in the WCBC. He's got the four horsemen right side to work on. Oh, did not get missed number one. Nine. Dick O'Connell leading by 18 coming into this third. He has a spare leave, the six pin to pick up. Ralph calls time so I can congratulate the others in the WCBC award winners, the two rookies of the year, the uh, Young lady is Paula Vincent and the men's rookie Craig Holbrook. And the personality of the year is a familiar face to you. You see it usually right after this program ends. Our own Brian Larry. Yes. So Dick O'Connell has matched Dennis Shute's spear. Dennis had a six. A seven for Dick O'Connell. The three and the six over on the right. The seven by itself on the left and a piece of wood in the back that looks as if it's, I can't really tell. My old depth perception isn't as good as it was when I was in the Navy, I guess. But anyway, I don't think it's gonna come into play. Maybe it will. Yeah, it did. Although it didn't knock the, anything down, but it was hit. Then a shoot coming up. One, two, four, and ten. Got the one, two, four. All right, it's a ten. I don't know how many of you guys were in the Navy and never had to take any of those depth perception things. You know, it would be, it seemed like the thing was about 40 feet away and you had two white things that looked like candles. And then you had a string that you could pull with one, one for your right hand and one for your left and you had to make those things parallel down there when they were about 40 feet away. That was your test for depth perception to move them either forward or back. Nice going, Dennis. Dick O'Connell. Now he has uh, one of those triangles to work on. Piece of wood just rolled into the pit, so he will be working on the three, five, and six by itself. Punch out. Nine.
So they are even in this third string, but it was an 18 pin lead for Dick O'Connell coming into the third string. He almost got a hammer. He got nine of them down. Still has the seven to work on. Ooh, a miss. That's rare. And he missed it on the left side, on the gutter side. Comes right back and gets it for a 10. All right, Dennis Shute now has an opportunity to cut into that lead, the 18 pin lead, since he has a bonus ball in hand. He gets seven of them, so it's down to 11 now. A nine, and he almost made a 10 out of it. right side one three six and ten and the eight pin in the background but there's wood between the one and the eight he just punched that one into the wood and took out one and eight a ten Here's our defending champion, Dick O'Connell, coming up, leading in the match by 11 and opposite a 9 and a 10. Five and eight with wood between the five and the eight. Was it a nine? So that at the moment raises the lead to 12, and then he will add to it with this next. Four more. So it's 16 now. But he's left with a spread eagle, and he's opposite a 10. Got just two from the right side. A nine, so make that a 15 pin lead right now. 15, one five. Four more boxes. Here's our challenger, Dennis Shute. One, three, ten. One little old piece of wood, sort of alongside that three pin. Nope, a little too full on the head pin.
with a couple of pieces of wood. And over on the left, it's the 478. Wood about where the one and three would be. He chooses to ignore it and instead got just the seven. It's nine, so he put up a pair of nines and Dick O'Connell with a 15 pin lead is in a comfortable position at the moment. told you before he is a top seed for our August 27th live show that's the $20,000 true value championship where the five bowlers who have had the highest three string total since our last program and he won the last one will be competing right now he's top seed with a 438 spare in second place is Joe Ashline in third Dan Myrick in fourth Nick Lombardi in fifth place John Thomas and our alternate is Ed Zernicki that's our big one, August 27th. <laughs> 22. 22 pin lead right now for Dick O'Connell. Challenger Dennis Shute will have the seven pin to pick up. Oh, too bad. He just missed it. Just missed it. He gets it for a 10. for a 109 and Dennis congratulates Dick O'Connell so Dick O'Connell goes rolling along last year when he was on he had four consecutive victories and then lost by four pins to Bob Reynolds and came on and won our True Value Championship, won the $10,000 first prize. And here he has made it six in a row. That one he held obviously too long and just popped out one pin, the four. That's the same score as he had last week. Last week he rolled a 373, and uh, today he rolls a 373. We'll be going for a home uh, viewer jackpot of 200 and uh, a high-low jackpot of 325. After I give you the final score again, which is Dick O'Connell, 373, Dennis Shute, 353.
is in our jackpot here, and the number is 726. That's a good one. We may very well have a winner today. Lots of folks guess in that vicinity. So anywhere from 760 to 736 would win the 200. And when I draw the card, that person is going to receive these prizes. A Hypenix plant food gift set contains fine quality Hypenix care products. Grow bigger, hardier plants with Hypenix plant food. Hypenix makes house plants grow like crazy. And a British sterling gift set for the man who's not just a friend, the cologne that's not just a fragrance. Give him British sterling and make him a legend in his own time. And Peterson Vise Grip Tools, the handyman's best friend. This Vise Grip long nose locking pliers gets in those hard to reach places and features a built in wire cutter. All right, let's see for $200 whether we have a winner or not. 716 to 736 wins it. Let's see what we have here. Warren Wagner of Groveland, Massachusetts is the card I've chosen, and his guess is 755. So, uh, yeah, I know. I, I shouldn't tease like that. So now it's up to 250. 325. That's what it's worth in our high-low jackpot. Dick O'Connell. Dennis. Hit it. Okay, Dennis, would you stay here, please? And uh, Dick will be behind you. This is your little souvenir to show that you really did finally make it. Huh? And you had an excellent opening string and two, two strikes in there. Uh, 143, it was great. Uh, unfortunately, I can only give you 350 plus $25 in the bonus money for tying in the first string. And this gift certificate, it's a $50 gift certificate from Super 7 Tire Dealers, okay? And don't uh, be away that much longer, will you? Get right back. Okay, good. Dick O'Connell, once again, a $50 gift certificate because you were the marksman of the day. You get the big trophy. You get uh, $700 uh, and da -da -da -da. what do we have for bonus money for you today? $225 in bonus money, huh? Take it. Congratulations again. Bye-bye, everybody. Don Gillis for the whole crew. See you next week.